Hello, my name's Olivia and I'm one of the outreach officers at Magdalen College. Uh, I'm going to give you an introduction to Oxford talk today. Uh, this is the same talk I'd give if I came to your school or if you came to visit us at Magdalen. So hopefully it should give you all the same information that you need to consider when thinking about applying to Oxford. So one of the first things to say about Oxford is that we are world leading. We have a really great academic reputation and we have been voted as the number one university in the world for the last four years by Times Higher Education. Um, this essentially just means our students quite like it here, the facilities are quite good and they get quite a lot from their teaching. So um, with that in mind, one of the most important things to think about is what you are going to study. Um, when you go to university, you're going to be focusing on one course for the entire time. So you've got to really, really love it. Um, think of it as doing a kind of nine to five full time job in something you love. So I'm going to play you now a short video, uh, which you can find on the Oxford YouTube if you need to, which is just going to give you a few ideas about what to think about when picking your course. Choosing your Oxford course is a big decision. So, here's a short list of do's and don'ts, which we hope will help. You don't have to choose your favourite school subject. There may be other options which you'll enjoy more at degree level. Don't pick a subject just because you think it'll get you a better job. A degree from Oxford will give you a whole range of valuable skills that will make you a really strong contender for the job you want. And don't let someone else choose for you. It's your degree, but also don't be afraid to ask for advice. Do explore what courses are available, even if you're pretty sure about what you want to study. Read up about them and make a really informed choice. Do think about studying something completely new. It could be a course, like archaeology and anthropology, that wasn't available at school. Or a course where you can specialise in an area of your favourite subject which particularly interests you, like material science or biochemistry. If you're finding it hard to decide between two subjects, think about combining them in a joint degree, like history and English, or physics and philosophy. But whatever you choose, do make sure you really know what you'll be studying. Make sure the course you've chosen has the syllabus and modules for you. And finally, do make sure that you have the right qualifications for the course. If you're going to study engineering science, your maths has to be up to speed. This is really important to avoid disappointment down the line. Now all that's left to do is go to ox.ac.uk slash courses and find the course for you. Studying the right course should be like reading a book you just can't put down. If you're fascinated and enthralled by what you want to study and can't wait to get going, then you'll have made the right choice. So I hope that was useful. Um, another thing you need to think about when considering university is how you are going to be taught your course. So most universities will use lectures where someone will stand at the front, give you lots of information about a particular topic. You'll often use seminars as well, which is smaller kind of discussion groups. Um, at Oxford we go even smaller than that to try and give you the most personalised teaching possible and we do this in the form of a tutorial. So this is where one or two other people um, from your subject doing the same topic as you will spend about an hour at least once a week, often more, with an academic in that subject talking about whatever you've been learning about. This is often in the form of you taking them an essay or a presentation and you'll go through it and you'll talk about the topics around it, talk about wider reading, talk about things that interest you the most about this topic. Um, it could be, if you're doing a more science-based subject, it could be that you've done a problem sheet, which is kind of just a set of mathematical or scientific problems. They'll often be based on a lecture series that you've recently had, and you get to go through those with a tutor who can help you with the answers, help you think more widely about it. The best thing about this is that not only will you be with someone who may be a world leader in their field, but you get to ask your questions. So the things that you're interested in, the things you're struggling with, you get to ask teachers directly those questions, which is the kind of one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two -on -two teaching that most universities don't provide and is something that if you really love your subject and really passionate about it and really want to discuss it, can be really, really beneficial. 
Um, another thing to consider is libraries. So we're really proud of our library at Oxford. It's called the Bodleian Library. This is actually more than one library. It's a network of different libraries. In Oxford, we've got over 100 libraries. Um, these can belong to a college, which I'll explain more about later. They can belong to your department um, or they can just be kind of general libraries that everyone has access to. Uh, these provide you with lots of different spaces to work and access to lots of different books. So we've actually got over 13 million printed items in Oxford. Oxford, uh, these would fill 400 kilometres of shelving. Um, this means you often don't need to buy a book. Um, and it also gives you the opportunity to explore lots of different things. So whether you want to look at a medieval manuscript, whether you want to look at magazines, we've got lots of uh, copies of magazines dating back years, lots of old artefacts, lots of really, really interesting things, as well as just books that you'll need for your course. Um, this often means you don't have to buy books, which is really great. Um, if you do need to buy a book, maybe it's a textbook and you want to have your own copy, we can often give you a little bit of help uh, financially to do that. There's also lots of artefacts in Oxford, so we've got 8.5 million objects. Um, this might not sound relevant, but not only are they interesting to look at, but depending on what course you're studying, these might prove really useful to you. Um, Oxford is also uh, about you and your future career, whether this is something that you've already got in mind or you just have no clue, Oxford will help you figure out what you want to do. Um, our career service is actually something you're a member of for the rest of your life. So if you are needing some help with your CV or you want to make a career change later on in your life, you can come back and access the same resources that you had at university. These resources include expert advice, one-on-one -on -one group sessions. It could be a careers fair where lots of different employers will come in and talk to you and give you advice. It could be help with your CV. Um, it also, a really important part of this is work experience and internships. So this is a great way to get industry experience. It's a great way to maybe earn a little bit of money and it can be a great way to travel the world. Um, and there are opportunities offered to Oxford students that are only offered to Oxford students. Having said all this, Oxford isn't just about studying. We have got over 400 clubs and societies um, and these are in a wide variety of things. These can be in sports. Maybe it's sport you've heard of before, like football or netball. Could be something really random like Quidditch or um, Octopush, which is underwater hockey. Um, we also have over 30 student-led theatre shows a term, so that would be more like 90 a year. Um, so if you are interested in the arts, there is lots to get involved with there. Um, we've also got volunteering and fundraising through the university or maybe outside of the university. There is live music. You can be involved in choirs and bands. Um, you could be involved in one of the student newspapers or magazines. You could get involved with debating or student politics. And there is lots and lots of opportunities to get involved in things like activism as well. Um, so whatever it is you want to do, there will be a society here that you can do it. And if there isn't one, then you are very welcome to make one yourself. As well as all the opportunities the university provides for you, um, Oxford is a really great city. Uh, it's quite a small city, but there's lots of young people in it due to the university. So it's cram packed with clubs and bars, restaurants, cinemas, uh, sports facilities, parks, anything you can really think to do. There is lots of opportunities to do it here. Oxford is supportive uh, and inclusive and we provide this using our college communities. So when you join the university, you'll become a member of the university, you become a member of your department, so that might be maths or physics, um, just whatever course you're doing, but you're also a member of a college and your college is where you live, but it's also a small community. It's not just like living in a hall of residence like you might do at another university. It is its own small community, a bit like a mini campus. Um, I'm going to show you this video now and this is going to tell you a little bit more about how that works. The world is full of mysteries. Where was Atlantis? What should you have for dinner? What on earth are Oxford colleges? We might not be able to solve the first two, but the third one's actually pretty simple. As an undergraduate student at Oxford University, you'll belong to a department like maths or English, which will oversee your course and house your lectures. But you'll also be part of one of our world famous colleges. Every undergraduate student who's ever gone to Oxford's been a member of a college, and you'll have one too. Each college is a set of buildings that will be the heart of your personal and academic life at Oxford. Some of them are only a few years old, and some are seriously ancient, like from when the Aztecs were around ancient. 
There are more than 30 of them, and they're spread all around the city, although they're all pretty near the centre. They're different colours and shapes and sizes. Some are next to the river or the park or have a theatre. Some have actual deer just casually hanging around. This one's got a graveyard, if that swings it for you. But we get it. Too much choice can be overwhelming. Why does it take three hours to pick a film on Netflix? So does it matter which college you go to and do you have to choose? Well, not really. You can either let us know your preferred college or if you make an open application, we can find one for you. And once you're here, you'll no doubt think your own college is the best. She does. Colleges are welcoming and safe communities where you can meet academics and fellow students from hundreds of different subjects. Everything from medicine to music, plus loads of things that don't start with them. You'll have most of your tutorials in your college and access to lots of support and advice on academic, practical or health matters. You'll be able to get your food there, use the library, wash your laundry, hang out in your own common room or sink a pint in your own bar. Mess about on boats wearing straw hats. When you arrive, you'll be able to live on site or right nearby, surrounded by neighbours who will also be brand new to Oxford and everyone in college will help you settle in. It'll be like Hogwarts, except without a weird trapdoor under the sink with a snake in it. It's all pretty relaxed though. You're allowed to come and go as you please or invite friends over. And there are loads of ways to get involved in activities and events outside of college. Sport, drama, role-playing games. And get to know people from all across the university. So colleges are a crucial part of Oxford life, but not something you need to worry about too much. And if you do apply to a specific college, it might not be where you end up. Around a third of students get offered places at one they didn't even apply to. But they still end up thinking theirs is the best. So I hope that gave you just a little bit more information about why we have the college system and how it works. Also, it's Maudlin that have got the deer. So if you're a fan of the deer, do consider coming to see them at Maudlin. We want to give you help when you need it. Um, whether this is with a pre-existing problem or something that develops over university or you just need some things to kind of keep you happy after you've made the transition from living at home, we are here to help. Um, this can be through the university, it can be through our counselling service with one-on-one -on -one or group sessions, it can be through student advice, it can be through our network of peer supporters who are around the university. So if you prefer to talk to a peer rather than a staff member, you are welcome to do so. Uh, we've got Oxford Nightline. This is where students will answer your calls in the night between 8pm uh, and 8am. So if you're just having a bit of trouble, there's someone you can call. There's also support within your college. So every college will have a staff and student welfare team which are there to help you. So no matter who you would prefer to talk to, there are people there to give you advice. As well as this, there is lots of events across the different colleges just to keep you happy. This might be involved with welfare tea, where people will get a bit of food and have a drink and a chat. It might be with dog walking, it might be yoga, wellness sessions, um, all sorts of different events um, teams across Oxford come up with to just try and keep you happy, try and keep you on top of things, and we are always there to help. Another thing is that you'll have lots of opportunities to find people who suit you. Um, obviously, it's great to make new friends who are different from you, and that's one of the benefits of going to such an international university. Um, but if you would like to meet people who have had similar backgrounds to you or have similar beliefs or are of the same faith, there are lots of different societies where you'll have the opportunity to do that as well. Oxford can help you with the cost of coming to university. So the main costs uh, are your course fees um, and your living costs. So your course fees are the same for pretty much every university you'll be applying for and your living costs will vary depending on your lifestyle and uh, what college or university you attend. Um, you can get financial support from the government. They will pay all of your tuition fees uh, in the form of a loan. You can also get additional loan funding for your living costs. This is means tested, so uh, it depends on the income of your household. So when you come out of university, you will, if you are earning over a certain amount of money, and this is about 25,000 at the moment, so it's quite a bit of money, um, you will begin to pay back a percentage of your student loan from what you earn over that 25,000. So if I earn 26,000, for example, I would pay back a small percentage of that 1,000 over the 25,000 pound threshold every single month. Now that it means that I would only be paying back what I could afford 
if your salary drops below that mark, you will stop paying back your loan. If it goes above, you will start to pay back more of your loan. What I'm trying to say is that this is a really easy loan and it is made so you can only pay back what you can when you can and after 35 years the loan is just written off having said this there is lots and lots of other support that you can get from oxford oxford has one of the most generous financial packages available and um, so if you do need a bit of extra help um we can give you up to five thousand pounds a year uh, one in four of our students get a bursary so a lot of people will use this financial help just to help cover your accommodation, your food, and just so you, that you can enjoy your time at university. There's also extra money available if you're estranged from your family or uh, even for little things like if you live quite far away and it's quite a lot of money to travel to get to Oxford. Colleges will also put a lot of effort into keeping costs down. So your accommodation is very heavily subsidised. Your food, which you can get in your college in the hall, is also heavily subsidised. As well as colleges doing this, they will give you the opportunity to apply for extra funding. So each college does this a little bit differently, but there's often extra funding if you need it. Sometimes this might be able to account for if you have a sudden uh, cost that you couldn't budget for, but don't have the money to pay for. We can give you some money for that. But it's also for fun stuff as well. It can pay for equipment. It can help pay for books. It can help pay for travel. It can help you go on a research trip. The point here is that um, if you love your subject and you think Oxford is a place where you would really enjoy studying it, then don't let finances be a barrier to coming because there's always financial help out there. So who goes to Oxford? Well, what are we looking for when we think about an Oxford student? There is no blueprint. There is no ideal type. Um, the main thing that every Oxford student has in common is that they love their subject and they are passionate about it. And this is something that we really want to see uh, through your application. Um, we also look for academic ability and potential. So yes, you've got to be smart, you've got to be good at your subject, but we do look at potential as well. Um, we want to see that you can get better when you come to university. If you already knew everything, there would be no point teaching you. So if you're thinking, oh, well, I'm not good enough to go to Oxford, then don't think like that. It's whether I have the potential to really thrive there. It's not about how good you think you are. You just got to really believe in yourself and give it a shot. Um, so some of our students have said a few things that they think you need. Um, you need to be enthusiastic, you need to be positive, the ability to work hard, be determined. It's really important to be curious, really important to go out and look for different resources, to find out more about your subject, to find out more about different universities. And you have to be self-motivated and not only will this help you if you get to Oxford, but it will help you to get in as well. It will help you with the application process. Um, so how do you apply to Oxford? Here is our application timeline. So uh, I'm just going to run through this quickly with you. Uh, it starts with UCAS. So this is the same as every other university. You apply through UCAS. We are just one of your five choices. But our deadline is a bit earlier. So we need you to start thinking about applying to Oxford a bit earlier than you might do other universities. Our deadline is the 15th of October. It is the 15th of October every single year. Uh, no matter what is happening, it will be that day. So make sure you don't miss it. Um, you'll probably have an internal deadline at your school that's a bit earlier anyway, because your teacher will have to do their reference. Um, on your UCAS application, you'll have a personal statement as well as giving us lots of details about you. For Oxford, you have to do a test. Uh, this is a test you will sit in your school. You will sit this after you have submitted your application. Uh, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a little bit. Um, you might have to submit some written work. So this depends on what subject you're doing. Uh, this will go into Oxford after your application um, and you will just submit as some school work, something that you think is good. Um, then you will find out kind of at the end of November time if you have been invited to an interview. Uh, quite a lot of people get an interview. It varies subject by subject. You'll stay in Oxford for a few days and have a couple of interviews over that period. And then at the beginning of January, we send all our decisions out and we let you know whether you have been given a place. Um, so the first thing to think about is go on our website, check the entrance requirements for your subjects. So uh, they are here at the bottom. Um, if you are doing kind of more specific uh, qualifications that aren't listed here, then send someone an email, have a look on the university website and they will help you out. Um, the three A's are for most social sciences and humanities subjects. Um, the A star and AA uh, A level is for most of the science subjects. And then a couple of subjects, something like engineering, um, will require A star, A star, A. 
So one of the decisions to make once you've picked your course, check your entrance requirements, is choosing a college. Now I will say this isn't an important decision. As the video explained earlier, you may be moved from one college to another during the application process. Um, so essentially this just gives you the opportunity to apply to a college you would quite like to live at. If you want a lot of green space, apply to one of the colleges with bigger grounds. If you want to be in a really small, tight-knit community, apply to one of the smaller colleges. If you want to get out of bed five minutes before your lectures, then apply to the college closest to your department. All of those reasons are fine, you just have to pick where you would quite like to live. Your personal statement will be submitted as part of your UCAS application. This goes to all of your five university choices, um, even if you've applied to different subjects at each university. So you really need to put quite a bit of effort into this and make sure it suits all the different courses that you are applying for. For Oxford, we want to see lots of academic content in your personal statement. We want 80% of your personal statement to be on academics and then 20% can talk about extracurriculars or irrelevant work experience that you may have. Um, when I talk about academics, I mean you can talk about things you've done in your schoolwork, but what we really want to see is that you've gone outside of your schoolwork. You've done a bit of reading. Maybe you've listened to a podcast or watched a documentary or you've been to a museum. Whatever it is that you have done that interested you, however you learn best, we want you to show us that you are interested in your topic. Um, it's all well and good to say, oh, I like chemistry, but if you said, I have read this book, list the book on chemistry, and I thought this about it, and explain to us exactly what it was that really interested you, then you have shown us that you like your subject and have gone the extra mile to prove it. That is kind of what we want to see with the personal statement. Um, it's also really important to remember the kind of very basic tip please make sure there is correct spelling or grammar um, please be honest make sure you've read and done everything that you say in the statement um, a good tip is to get a parent or carer or friend someone who maybe doesn't know much about your subject to read your personal statement just to check for grammatical errors to check that it makes sense after you have done your personal statement and submitted as your UCAS form, you will do an admissions test. As I said before, this is something you sit in your school. Please make sure you have registered for the admissions test. Um, the same deadline for registering for the test is the same as the UCAS application. So that's on the 15th of October. Um, these tests are largely based on skills, not set knowledge. So if you are doing a history test, for example, this would be based on your skill of being able to read a document and extract information from it and make guesses about the kind of history surrounding it this is a skill you will have learned in your lessons they are not just going to ask you multiple choice about history um, if you're doing one of the science year subjects it might be based on some knowledge but this will be stuff that you are studying in your a levels and it will just kind of be the hard stuff um, it's important to remember that there is no pass fail with these tests and that this is a much harder test and a different test than what you might be used to this means one you should practice Two, you should look at the mark schemes. These are online for you, so you can have a look at them. But it also means not to worry when you come out of it. You will be getting probably a lower mark on this than you are used to getting. That is because this test is designed to push you, and we just want to see how you perform. Uh, when you submit some written work, which you may or may not have to do, check your course requirements. It's all about just picking a piece of work that you thought was pretty good and you liked. It's just some schoolwork. It's not anything extra. Um, it's important to be something that's on a topic you enjoy because you might end up talking about it at your interview. Um, hopefully you'll get invited to an interview. These happen in early December. You will come and stay in Oxford. We'll give you a room. We'll give you some food. There's lots of really nice student helpers around. They'll often take you to your interview room. They'll give you some advice. They'll have games going on. Lots of things to keep you occupied. Um, with regards to the interview itself, uh, you'll usually be in the interview with about two academics. Um, one of them might not speak to you, they might just be taking notes, don't be put off by this. Um, and the point of the interview is to replicate a tutorial. So we teach you using these tutorials and you'll be doing that for three or four years when you get to Oxford. So we want to make sure that this system is something that's going to work for you and that you're going to be someone who's going to really benefit from it. So see the interview as more of a conversation, um, just about an academic subject. The interview will try and push you. We want to push to see how you think. So it will be difficult um, and it might push your ideas or make you think about things in a different way. This is all a good thing. It's just going to try and test you. 
It might involve being given a piece of material before your interview or during your interview. Maybe it's an object, maybe it's a picture, maybe it's a piece of text and working to see what you can figure out about that during the interview. Remember not to worry if you think you've got something wrong in an interview. An interview is about how you think, not what you know. This is why during your interview it's really important to speak out loud and say all your thoughts, even if it's not right. It might actually help the academic push you in the right direction and it will help them see your th thought process, which is a really important part of studying at Oxford. One last thing is that we want to understand you in your context. Um, this might mean that your grades are more impressive than someone else with similar grades who went to a different school because of the nature of your school. It might mean that if something has gone on to affect any of your exams, to affect your schoolwork, we need to know. Now, it's really important that you're honest on your uh, UCAS application, that you get your teacher to include any relevant information in their reference to you. And also that if there is any extenuating circumstances which you are experiencing, either during the application process, maybe it was during your GCSEs or your A-levels as well, um, that you let us know. You can do this by emailing whichever college you have applied to. Um, it's really important to let us know before we've made any decisions about your application because we can't change our decision afterwards. So if you tell us retrospectively about an extenuating circumstance, we can't factor that in. But if you tell us straight away when you make your application, then we can look at you in your context. So once we have this, once we have all this information, we look at it really carefully to make the best decisions. So this means that we have quite a wide picture of you as a person and you as a student when we make our decisions. Um, if you're worried about one part of your application, maybe it's pulled up by another part. Um, so lastly, how can you prepare? Um, work hard. This seems obvious, but working hard really is the best way to get the grades. Um, it's the best way to kind of research your universities. We want you to go beyond your schoolwork. We want you to really prepare for your tests. We want you to really look up what course you want to do. Really think about it. This is the best way to prepare. And you can do this by finding lots of extra resources. There are lots of useful things on the Oxford website which will point you to different resources that might be relevant to your subject. Make sure this is something you really want to learn about, something about your course that really interests you and that you learn about it in the way that benefits you best. If you're a visual learner or you prefer to listen to things, then pick a resource that's going to work for you. Please uh, come on an open day if you can or access any virtual open days that might be going on. Have a look on the college websites and there'll be lots of useful information. Um, this is really a, a great way to get a feel for a university by doing some form of open day. So really do put the time into that. Um, and finally, please do not be afraid to connect with Oxford. If you see an email address on a website and you have a question, send us an email. It's just people like me at the other end of a computer willing to answer your questions. Um, you can also do this directly with students. Social media is a great way to connect with Oxford. Most um, student bodies, students from different colleges will have some form of Instagram or Twitter page. You can see a picture of ours at the bottom of this PowerPoint. We also have a chat to students function on our website that hopefully you will be using. So um, please visit our website and ask students questions and just send us an email. Make sure that you get the answers to all the questions you have. Um, thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been helpful. As I say, if you have any questions, please ask one of our students on the Maudlin website or drop us an email.